Division of Labor by Gender by Alexandra Moore. Cultural ecology. Cultural ecology refers to the process by which individuals adjusted to their surroundings, which means for cultures such as the Yanomamo tribe, it refers to them living off of the land without any help or influence from other people and tribes. They move from place to place figuring out on their own how to cultivate the land, hunt, gather, and provide for their families. They had to adjust to each new area of the land accordingly to survive. They knew when to abandon the land and move on, and then knew when to come back to that land again to hunt and plant. The Native American tribes took the land as their own and adjusted to the temperaments of it, such as bad weather, soil, etc. They learned how to hunt on the land, garden, gather, and provide for their families as well. They built homes for themselves to protect themselves against the conditions of the land. They made just one spot their home and adapted to it instead of moving around a lot. The United States is still involved in cultural ecology. People grow, farm, and herd. We do this nowadays on the same land for long periods of time. People know what the land and soil needs to keep growing properly. Without cultural ecology, many cultures would have died out years ago. Functionalism. The Yanomamo tribe, uh, Native American tribes in the United States have followed functionalism, specifically Malinowski's way of functionalism. His version assumes that all cultural traits serve the needs of individuals in a society, that is, they satisfy some basic or derived need of the members of the group. This stands true for all of these cultures. These people do what they need to do to provide nutrition, safety, movement, and growth for their family and other members of their cultures. These individual things make up a whole. Without working together, functionalism could not work. Everyone helps each other out, so everyone's individual needs are met. Diffusionism can be described as all societies change as a result of cultural borrowing from one another. It means how these cultures learn their traits. We do not quite know how the Yanomamo tribe learned how to hunt and live off of the land, if they taught themselves or if someone else taught them. They certainly taught it to their children to keep the people going and surviving. Native Americans at some point in time learned plowing skills and many other things from the people that immigrated over from Europe. The Native Americans learned it through direct contact from the people of Europe. The United States is known as the melting pot of the world. All sorts of new cultures, ideas, and ways of life have been coming into this country for a long time. These techniques have been learned from intermediate contact and stimulus division. The American pizza is an example of stimulus division. Americans borrowed the idea from the Italian food culture. Pizza can now be ordered almost anywhere in the world. There are so many things that have been introduced to us through some sort of diffusion. Hunting. In the Yanomamo cultures, hunting is their primary source of food. In all cultures, males either dominate hunting or it is wholly a male activity. Women never do any of the hunting. They may participate as the eyes of the tribe, but they never make the kill. It has been shown that around the world, the males almost always hunt and trap large animals. This supports the strength theory. The strength theory focuses on generally greater strength of males and their superior capacity to mobilize their strength in quick bursts of energy. This is why it is always the males lifting all of the heavy objects, hunting, and doing all of the physical labor. In the Native American culture, the man also did all of the hunting. The women had nothing to do with the hunting. They butchered and cleaned up the meat. In the United States, no one really needs to hunt anymore. People hunt in current times for recreational sport. The people do not need the food. They want the skins or the heads to show off for trophies. Fishing. Fishing is very common in the Yanomamu culture. The women actually do more of the fishing than the men do. The men still helped, but the women did over half the work the men did. The women were not allowed to use weapons to kill the fish, at least not the bows and arrows, because the men used those for hunting. In most Native American tribes, the women did not fish. They cleaned up the fish when they were brought home and gutted them and cooked them for dinner. The women did have uses in the water, though. They helped to build the canoes and were considered experts at doing so. In the United States, when women and men fish, like hunting, this is more of a recreational use. Unlike hunting, the people do not waste any parts of the fish. They actually eat them or throw them back in alive. Gathering and gardening. Gathering and gardening are very big parts of the Yanomamo culture. The women did majority of gathering, but men and women did equal parts of gardening. 
Men do all of the slashing of the undergrowth while the women harvest and weed. In gathering, the men climb up trees and shake the stuff loose that are up on the branches while the women are below gathering them. The women are closer to home when they garden and gather so it is easier for them to look after the children and is not as dangerous. In the Native American tribes, the men cleared the fields and scraped tree trunks to make canoes. The Native American women were given a lot of freedom. They made their own daily schedules and relied on each other to do what needed to be done each day. They planted and weeded the fields, they harvested and processed the food, and they gathered berries, greens, and firewood. The women also had the children with them and the babies strapped to their backs. The women of these tribes were actually allowed to do heavy and dangerous work. In the United States, gardening is recreational. There are farmers and growers that give us the produce that is in the grocery stores every day. But some people have gardens in their own backyards. This is a great thing because people do not waste what they grow. They can store it and can use it for a long time. People in the U.S. gather mostly when they go camping or backpacking. They would gather fruit around the area and wood when they need to build fires. Child care. Child care is one of the major things that all the cultures have in common. How they do that can be different, but all cultures reprodu reproduce and have kids. It is a never-ending cycle. In almost all of the cultures, the children raising is done by the women. In the Yanomamo culture, men have very little to do with the child raising. This is seen as the com compatibility with child care theory. Although the males can take care of infants, most traditional societies will rely on breastfeeding of the infants, which the men cannot do. That is why the women have to stick close to home and garden and gather mostly, so the children are out of harm's way and so the mother is always available to feed and care for them. The Native American women actually put their children in danger when they left their homes to garden and gather. The women did this to educate their children and to teach them how to garden and gather firsthand until they were old enough to take on other tasks. In the United States, it is still viewed as the women's job to raise the children. As the years go on, though, this view is slowly changing. Many men are now given paternity leave from work to come home and help their wives out with the children for up to two weeks. Many dads are even working from home while the mom goes to work and has a typical career job that many view the men are supposed to have. Cooking and cleaning. Cooking and household work is still viewed as primarily the woman's job. In the Yanomamo culture, the women do all of the cooking. The men may help in the process of peeling or gutting the food, but the women primarily do everything involving meals. In the Native American tribes, the women do all of the cooking and baking as well. They gut and peel all of the food. In the United States, women and men equally do the cooking. In certain households, Maybe one gender or the other does it more, depends on who's home more often, but there are a lot more male chefs nowadays than there are female chefs. Child labor. Child labor is a problem of immense social and economic proportions in many developing regions of the world today. For centuries, people have been making children work at all sorts of ages. It can never really be answered when the proper time for a child to start working is. And the Yanomamo culture, boys spend 60 minutes to 80 minutes per day playing with bows and arrows and spotting, tracking, and stalking small birds and other tiny games. It is seen in their culture that children never really get to be children for very long. From the age of about five on, they are always doing something to help out, whether it is gardening, gathering, fishing, or practicing to hunt. They do not work as long as adults or do the heavy physical labor until they get a bit older. In Native American tribes, the children gather mussels and act as scarecrows in the field. The children also in these tribes just helped out wherever they were needed. It seems in the United States that kids get jobs whenever their parents feel it is necessary for them. A long time ago, children were forced to work in harsh conditions and many died in factories every day. Since the labor laws have been enacted, most kids cannot get jobs until about the age of 15. Most parents want their children to go to school and get a good education so they will get trained for a job that they want. A lot of young men and women also sign up for the army. Most children in other cultures do not have the option of a higher education or joining their culture's version of the army. Thank you.